I don't know. Because realistically, what happened was I had a picture that I would, that was my go-to, and I would show people. And every, anytime I show people, I'd feel gassed up because the guys would always be like, they, they, they'd either give me two reactions. One was like a nice bro kind of thing. And the other was like a nonchalant, kind of like, nice, yeah. <laughs> right? But I could see, I could, I could see that they was looking, right? <laughs> so interesting. <laughs> see, that is a whole, a whole boy briefs question itself. Like, why do guys Literally. act like they're nonchalant? Well, they're not. When they're so chalant. Yeah. They're all the chalant. All the chalant. Majorly chalant. <laughs> I'm crying. Okay, I'm so sorry, EJ. Keep going. <laughs> You want to hear a really funny story about pregame rituals? I just okay. thought of this. So at work the other day, there was this girl. So, okay, so one of the girls that I work with came in for her shift, and she starts telling us about how she was getting out of her car, and there was a girl in the car beside her parked in the parking lot who was living or listening to, um, like, super hardcore rap, like, at the loudest that it could possibly go and she was in there singing along rapping along and like just giving her like head was banging hands were going like like it was just a whole performance but she's in the car by herself so anyway my coworker comes in and she goes oh my gosh I think that that was my next client in her car doing this uh -huh. and if so i'm not really looking forward to this appointment because it seems like she's a little out there eccentric whatever right oh. no but just like in a in a i don't have the energy to to handle somebody who's about to come in here on 10 right mm. so anyway we're like well this is gonna be good please report back later <laughs> turns out that it wasn't a client coming in. She was coming in for a job interview. <laughs> Aww. It was the funniest thing. And she she did come in on 10. Like, it was actually a lot. Yeah. I think she might have pre-gamed a little too hard. But... <laughs> she pre-gamed too close to the sun. Too close to the sun. But, yeah, it was, it was funny. Yeah. That's she, she did a little too much. But I was like, you know what? I, I respect, respect the pregame hustle. Yeah, it was really funny. Do you think, though, because I'm picturing somebody doing all that, and everyone's like, oh, no, they're going to come in on 10, and, and their 10 is really like someone else's five, and it just, like, what if she had severe social anxiety, and so she comes in, and now she's like, okay, now I can be at, like, the regular level <laughs> of everyone else. Like, that's immediately what I thought. In theory, yes, that could happen, but this was an objective 10. Oh, wow. Like, across the board, the judges, 10. <laughs> it was all 10. Well, I hope it was worth it. I hope, I hope it was worth it for her. Yeah. You, you can't tell me, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, do I spill? <laughs> no, keep your job. <laughs> Trade secrets. Trade secrets. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should. Can I, can I just, can we start? Tell people where they are right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think it, it is time. Hey, you're here. <laughs> well, what's up everyone? Welcome to Big Girl Panties, the podcast where faith meets real life. And we dive into the heart of womanhood. We're your hosts. I'm Shayna. This is Priya. And we invite you to, in, to join us on embracing the messy, the complicated, and the beautiful aspects of life through a Christian lens and put on our big girl panties to tackle the tough stuff together. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Feel <Well>. done. <laughs> yeah. So, what's up? I have more icks. I didn't write. I, oh, no, I did write them oh, down. Oh, so this, you're free icking. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. That's fucking... What? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's really funny. I don't know what that means, but you also knew exactly what yeah, I meant. I knew exactly what you meant I immediately. Think that might be the title of the episode. 
I'm on know, with the way that our well. brains are right now. There might be some weirder stuff that we say later to choose from, honestly. Literally. Mm. But it, it's okay. It got me. Yeah. But what are we doing? Go ahead. <laughs> it got me. Like, what was that? Oh, yeah. <gasps> oh, no. Tell me your ex. Okay, so. Tell me your ex. I was listening to our episode that came out today. Okay. Um, Which one is it? Find your ecosystem. That's the one that came out. That would be episode three. Yeah. Find your ecosystem, right? Yeah, where we talked about, about making our friends. Did we talk about our icks in that one? Am I giving teasers? Is that actually episode four? <gasps> you're saying you're saying too much. Spoiler alert! No, no but it's okay because they won't be spoiled because they're still going to have heard the, the following. Week's oh, episode. true. It will have already been. A- Never mind. We live in an alternate crisis. Of the Panty Earth. Universe is wild. Hold on. Let me just break the ice. <laughs> what? We don't normally record at this time on this day. That's true. You know what? I think we're actually just really thrown off right now. I'm hangry. Ooh. I didn't eat today because I was anxious. And it's coming back to bite. I've just had an anxious day, but it's coming back to bite me. This is going to be a short episode. Yes. I don't know if I should say sorry or if people are like, rejoice! Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've been hitting out some long ones. Uh, but yeah. I feel like at the end good. of our episodes, I'm normally like, okay, I'm ready for the snacks. Let's go get snacks. You really But do. I think today I might be like sprinting. <laughs> I agree. Oh my god. I agree. Okay. Yeah. So forgive us um <laughs> if we're off. We we try. We pivoted. Today. They already know we're off. Yeah. As a general statement, Way we are off. Okay. Anyway, back to the X. Tell me what tell me what's up. Yeah, okay. So I was thinking about our conversation that we had in some episode. At some point. Episode X. In the past. Yes. About our X. And I discovered that I have more. Okay. And I realized that they're all grammar related. That doesn't surprise me in the least. For me, no. 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 Yeah, that's what I mean. Like for you. Go yeah. ahead though. Lay them on me. Okay. So it was did you see the aggression? Okay. <laughs> it was giving Miranda Priestley. Like <laughs> Ooh. That's all. That's all. Um We really do need to plan. Wait, I, while you look for it, my my little my little bit. Mm-hmm. There's a list of movies that I want to have a girls' night and watch. Yeah, in no particular order, The Princess Diaries and The Princess One Diaries and two. two. Yes, Princess Diaries two slaps. Yeah, like they did a good job. Uh, I remember when watch they were the... teasing that there was going to be a three. Yeah, I'm still. My fingers are still crossed, but I feel like I don't know. If I'm not true. holding my breath, but my fingers are crossed. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was Princess Diaries one and two. The Devil Wears Prada. I want to rewatch the Lizzie McGuire movie. Mm. Um. There was another, the Bring It Ons. They're so much Classic. fun. Classic, um, burlesque. Oh, so good. And Clueless, Clueless. And I need to throw in a Mary Kate and Ashley movie in there. Oh, but I'm yeah. not sure which one. I'll yeah. take any. You know what I would also add though is um, Legally Blonde. I would enjoy Legally Blonde. Mean Girls. Yes, classic. And Miss Congeniality. Do you know what? I don't know if I've ever seen Miss Congeniality. What? I don't think I have. Who is Okay, it? move that to the top of the list. Oh. Sandra Bullock. Oh, and I like her too. She's like, not that I like go like, I don't watch all her movies, but every time I see her in something, I'm like, she's really great. Mm. Oh, I have another movie to add. Wild Child. Oh. Yeah, I love yeah. Wild Child. We should, um, yeah, we we should, should make that, that happen soon. Yeah. I could, I could do that. And what, what snack do you think is absolutely necessary at a movie marathon? For us, chips and guac. Yes. And sugar snap peas and hummus. Yeah. Non-negotiable. Yeah. Like it has to be. Mandatory. Mm-hmm. If those aren't there. We're not there. We're not there. The end. <laughs> Period. Um, oh, what else? Uh, for me, popcorn. Okay. I'm, I'm not a, a popcorn big- girl. I will have a itty bit of popcorn, and typically it needs to be sweet and salty. I don't like just no. plain popcorn. Ooh, I found something we disagree on. You don't like sweet and salty. No. Nope. Yeah. Get it out of here. You don't like combos like that. No. Nope. I do. Never have, never will. It's okay. I still love you. Sweet food with food that's supposed to be salty? That was the ick face, so we just uncovered another ick. 
true. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. Like um, people who eat cranberry sauce with their turkey dinner. Disgusting. I love cranberry sauce. No. Because like, and I, so I don't usually eat turkey, but I, okay. I feel like I'll be dragged for this. <laughs> I like cranberry sauce on my salmon. Interesting. Yeah. Can't really. Again, more like during Thanksgiving, Christmas type vibe when it's that type of dinner. Hmm. I want cranberry sauce on my on my salmon. I actually really do enjoy a sweet and salty combo. I really, really do. No. I can understand it. Yeah, I think it's very delicious. I it do. makes my taste buds happy. The most I can do is like honey garlic, like chicken wings or something. Oh. Like that's okay to me. Yeah. Or like um, you know, some Thai food. Yeah. Can have like a bit of sweetness to it or something like that. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Okay. But I think it's for me, it's like specifically sweet like food items in a savory dish. Not like the dish as a whole just having a slight element of sweetness to it. Okay. Like honey garlic wings. Yeah. So like, yeah, cranberry sauce with turkey dinner. Can't do it gross i don't care if it's from a can i don't care if it's homemade it's a no for me not even the homemade no wow i'll taste it on its own and i'll think that it's good on its own but i'm not gonna like put it on my plate and lest you contaminate the whole thing no because it would contaminate it <laughs> what's the code that they say in monsters inc you know when they're when like a i all i'm hearing is the tone in which they yell it but i can't hear the word itself what's you know the what I mean? code i'm like hearing like ah, ah. <laughs> yeah, coming from the loudspeaker. No I don't know, but it's about like the kid waking up, right? Yeah, or like when they touch a human item, right? Are you sure they don't say contaminate? Twenty three nineteen. Twenty three nineteen. Is that it? Yes. What? That's what they say. When scare door, yeah, exits the door onto the scare floor with the child's socks stuck on his back, his scare assistant calls out twenty nineteen, twenty three nineteen. To alert the child detection agency. Yeah. 2319. Anyway, that's okay. what it would be. Okay. If the cranberry sauce started to intermingle with the turkey and the gravy it's and the mashed potatoes. Racism. It's giving. Rosa Parks could never. But the- okay. <laughs> she was all about the cranberry sauce. Yeah. Shout out Auntie Rosa. <laughs> Me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Like I will continue to segregate my Clearly, food. I have some personal, <laughs> some deep seated issues. Yeah, that I need to work out within myself. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's gross. People who put like um like strawberries or blueberries in a salad, I can't do that. Uh, Raspberry vinaigrette, uh, vinaigrette dressing. Jail. No, disgusting. I don't like that. But I will say, I it depends on what mood I am. I can handle a blueberry in a salad. Just one. Because <laughs> that's all I could handle. <laughs> a singular. I, I don't think I like apples and salads. Mm. And strawberries, if they're like scarce. And it has to be paired well. So like I will do strawberries or blueberries only if there's goat cheese. Interesting. Yeah. I think the only way that I could do a fruit fruit, and I'm not like talking about, oh, to me, this is technically a fruit. Like oh, whatever. Please, none of that. But like a Is fruit. A fruit. Fr- no. Yeah, but that's not what VeggieTales taught us. So moving on. <laughs> you can't tell me that there's a higher authority on, ve- on vegetables. Than VeggieTales. Than yes. VeggieTales. God, the, the one who made the tomato okay. is a fruit. Why the show is about God. And it's called VeggieTales. Like we're like <laughs> treading on. And like, Larry's, Larry's a fruit too. He's a cucumber. That's a fruit. Oh my gosh, my I whole childhood was a lie. Cucumber. <laughs> no, I know it's a fruit, but I, I consider them to be vegetable adjacent. Yeah. Because they're not so sweet. So we're talking about to me, sweet fruits. If it's not sweet, sweet, then you'll count it it's as a, a veggie. It's a vegetable. Mm-hmm. Fight me. I don't care. Wait, it's what? Vegetable. Say that again. If it's not sweet, if then it's, it's not a vegetable. Sweet, sweet. But he's going to be like, tomatoes are sweet. Yes, they are, but like in a savory way. Yeah. Everyone knows what we're talking about. Let's not nitpick at this. Come on. <laughs> there are bigger issues yeah, in the world, like, people. Yeah, let's move it along. <laughs> All I hear in my head is Kim. <laughs> There's people There's dying. people that are dying. <laughs> Kim. <laughs> I lost my diamond earring in the I'm ocean. Here. <laughs> Tomatoes are a vegetable. <laughs> um, hmm. 
Yeah, no. Pineapple on pizza. Hard pass. I enjoy it. I know that's a hot take. Depending on the combination. But... I don't know if that's even, is it a hot take or is it just a dividing take? I feel like the world is very divided. Yeah. Like, same thing where, I don't know if it's a hot take, but pouring your cereal before your milk or your milk before your cereal. It's not mm. that it's a hot take. It's just that half of the people. It's it just that one is wrong it. and one is right. Whoa. Sis. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. I, I, don't know if, I don't know if that's the same. I that said one, it. That one sounds a little psychopathic. I'm not saying which one I do. I'm just saying that it's a. Okay. But which one do you do? This is a Birkin. This is another Birkin. <laughs> <laughs> what about these two Birkins are different? And what about them divides the Birkin community? <laughs> Give me a Birkin and I'll tell you. <laughs> Um, but I wait. What was your even question? Do you want me to tell you what I do, or do you yeah. do you want to not touch that? Well, I mean, I feel like people need to know if you're a psychopath now or not. Oh, well, I pour the cereal before the milk. That's the right answer. Yeah, not a psychopath. Thank you. Pass check. What do you do? Well, okay. Clearly, if you're saying I'm not a psychopath, you do the same. Yeah. 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 Anyway, back to your original ix. Oh, like, yeah. You had an ick list that was nothing that we just talked about. I guess my ix are food and grammar. Food and grammar. Okay. Yeah. My ix are all very um, personality. Hmm. Like, and it, there's not a lot of them. It's just like, don't be mean. Don't be rude. Don't be like snippy and jealous. Don't like, I just don't like that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's unnecessary. It is unnecessary. But other than that. To me, so is using improper grammar. Yeah, but I I just let it slide because I understand that like, I understand that it's hard for people sometimes. It would never happen. I know that, and I would never like out loud judge oh, somebody not. for it. But in my head, I might a little bit. Oh, like okay for okay okay for example, give me your list because we already talked about my thing with people saying irregardless. Yeah. Ick immediately no, but okay. My other one is when people say seen instead of saw yeah like That's oh very yeah canadian i seen that i'm like i'm sorry you saw that you know what i mean like that's a big one for me i feel like a lot of canadian people actually do that you think and it's I, a canadian thing i i don't know if it's a canadian thing but i realized how many people I know who are Canadian or how many times I've seen something where they're mocking Canadians and they do that, which makes me think it's a Canadian thing. And I don't like it per se. Is it a Canadian thing or do they just want to think that it's a Canadian thing? Well, either way, I reject it in Jesus' name, so we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and amen to that. Yeah, we're good. Okay, next my one. next one is when people specifically write could of or like should of instead uh, of could have like as a contraction yes because it sounds like when you say it could have it sounds like you're saying could of but you're it's not it's a contraction yeah when people write that could of like of off the cliff <laughs> i want this to be that? I people see it a lot. all the time I, see it a lot. I want <laughs> okay because Veggie Tales came up, you know how it's like, and now it's time for silly songs with Larry. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be like, and now it's time for grammar with Priya. Like that's the energy I'm getting. And you like come out and you're like, yeah, Don't no. Do and that. like to be clear, like I'm not, I'm not, you know, like the grammar police that you see online or like on Facebook or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, like those kind of people. Like I'm not that. I will keep it to myself. I'm but writing no comments. You have in my head. All the comments are happening. You have to admit though. The one of the easiest ways to humble somebody is to correct their grammar. It is such it, it's like such a low blow, but it humbles people. Like I've seen people in the midst of big debates and comments, and then somebody's like, actually, it's should have like and say it the correct way. Comments stop. Because what are you supposed to say after that? Mm -hmm. Aside from call them the grammar police. But at the end of the day, you were wrong. I think it's an easy way to humble somebody. Yeah. If you're fighting dirty. <laughs> Which I, I don't condone. I, I agree. Yeah. But yeah, that's like. Those are your ex. Those are my. Yeah. And I honestly think. Oh, no, this might sound really judgmental. But I think that like if I was single. And I was like going out on a date with somebody. Yeah. And like to be clear, this is like 
you know, a first or second date, like we're still in the introductory meeting phase. Yes. There's been no like longstanding commitment because Mm -hmm. if this happened, I wouldn't make it to longstanding commitment. But if I was going on a first or second date and the guy said, oh, yeah, like I seen that the other day or something like that. It's been real. (laughs) I mean, I say that. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. I've never once heard you say that. Mom and dad are I'm questioning again. everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. No, if you have said it, it's like so like once in a blue moon that I didn't even catch it. EJ, she was so struck by you that she let it slide. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> I've been waiting for. I don't even know the words to that song, baby. I don't know, but oh, my ears like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Those are my. Those are my additional icks. Okay, I love mm-hmm. it. Thank you. <laughs> In case anyone wanted to know, <laughs> do you have more icks? Did you think of any more? No, I free ick with me. <laughs> Free the ick. Um, I think that really, truly, they just, they have to do with, like I said, the, the character things. Anything mm-hmm. else, it'll annoy me a tiny bit, but I'll let it slide so easily that I'll, I won't remember in two seconds. But just being unnecessarily rude, being uh, being not nice to servers, like making, and I don't mean this in the way you said it, but like actually calling out someone's grammar in a way to like demean them. Yeah. Or like, like being rude. not not to their face, but like saying that, ugh, like, why would they say it like that? Like, I don't like that because they're trying their best. Like, I think that's just where most of my icks lie. Mm-hmm. So your ick is with people being icky. Yeah, that's a great way to phrase it. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. And then there's like, I mean, it's embarrassing to watch people run with their backpacks, for example. Because <laughs> they lean forward. Well, it's not even the lean forward. <laughs> it's the way it jostles. Like, I don't know what it is, but it like, I'm always like, ooh. Oh my gosh. But you know what happens to me, actually? So I don't really get the ick. I just get really, really bad secondhand embarrassment. That's oh. what that's what ick is. But I don't feel like that's what ick is. Like, to I don't me, think that's what ick the is. The secondhand embarrassment feels very different than just like a uh, cringe. Yeah. Because secondhand embarrassment, like, I feel it. It's just deep in my soul. I'm like, <gasps> and so that's what happens to me. But icks are, yeah, mostly about people being icky, like you said. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. People running with backpacks. And people running with backpacks. Wait, that's so funny. Because it doesn't just jostle up and down. It also is going side to side at the yeah, same time. Yeah, we get unilateral or wait, trilateral, whatever. Laterals, all the lateral. All the, lateral. <laughs> all the planes. All the lateral movement. Yeah, and it's a lot. Ugh. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Wait. That makes me think of like the kid in school. There was always that one kid that like just <laughs> hands out. <laughs> yeah. You know what I would love to know? Where are those kids in life now? Today? See everybody's bosses. Well, well I, I was, was gonna, gonna say, say they're probably brilliant they're like and the smarter people who than own Facebook all of us and, and like, Instagram and like Yeah. Like they they yeah. The most successful. Yeah. We probably work for them right now and we don't even know it. Yeah. And they can continue to be weird because who's going to tell them otherwise? True. I love this for They're them. They're rich. Yeah. And brilliant. And, and rich. Yeah. And fast. And fast. <laughs> and fast. Yes. Hopefully one of them created an aerodynamic backpack. Mm. Okay. My big girl painting moment. So I, so I had a realization this week. Mm about how much I guess like shame and embarrassment maybe but guilt also that I have just internalized over the years from having ADHD and struggling with it and not knowing Mm. yeah so it all started because actually EJ and I were talking about the podcast and 
he asked me how much I like how far along I was in the editing process of some of the videos that I was working on. And I answered in such a way that was like, <clears throat> like a little bit vague. And like, I mean, I wish I could remember exactly what it was that I said, but it was pretty vague. And it was in an effort to give the impression that I maybe had more done than I actually did. And I mean, he was just asking so that, you know, he could lend a hand and like help if there was more that needed to be done. But I realized in that moment that I had received that question in such a way, not from him, but like I had internalized that question and I felt something about it. And I don't know what in that moment it was that caused it to kind of like click. Um, but it took me back to the years of my childhood, like working on homework, for example, where, you know, my parents would be like, okay, we're going to have dinner at this time. And, you know, it's, it's two hours until dinner. And so we, you know, are going to finish teaching. My parents are music teachers. So, you know, we have like three more lessons to go or whatever. And after that, we're going to eat dinner. And so this window of time, you know, get your, your homework done kind of thing. And so many times they would come back after they had finished teaching and I didn't have it all done. And through no, like, there's no like blame being put here through no fault of their own. Understandably, they would come back and be like, what have you been doing this whole time? And I remember those instances being so difficult for me because they asked and I felt shame and I felt guilty about it. But then on the other hand, I was like, I would actually love to know, too, <laughs> yeah. because I know I feel like I've been sitting here trying, but yet I don't really have much to show for it. So when you find out the answer, can you please come and let me know, too? Loop me in. Yeah. And. So I think that because of that whole thing, I just learned how to kind of maneuver around those questions and answer in such a way that it like put the other person at ease or gave them enough information that they wouldn't um, look at me differently or feel disappointed in me or confused by me or... I mean, pick the word. Um, and then I would at least feel better that they weren't thinking less of me in some kind of a way. And then as long as I knew that, then I could go off on my own and struggle it out by myself and just like figure it out and get it done. And then at least it was a me thing and no one else had to know about it or be affected by it or, you know, see it play out. Right. Um. Yeah. I don't I don't know what it was about in that moment in that conversation with EJ that made that light bulb go off, but it did. And I was like, "Oh my gosh." Yeah. And I Yeah, it, it's weird now like being diagnosed with that so much later in life. Um because I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm learning how to have to like work with it now and how to understand myself in light of that now. But it's also really, really weird being able to look back on myself and realize all these different situations and, and instances where it was affecting me and I, I didn't know. And so now to look back on it with a bit of clarity but also knowing what I felt in that moment. Like, it's just a very bizarre yeah. thing. Um, yeah. So now, to be honest, I'm not totally sure where that leaves me. 
Okay. Um, because now that I know that I have internalized those feelings, uh, yeah, I'm not totally sure what to do about them and the fact that they're there. But now I just know that that's the case, which is cool, I guess. <laughs> it is. But yeah. it's also like, oh, okay. So I just add that to the list of, you know, healing and personal growth yeah. that I'm trying to do. So, yeah, it was it was a cool moment of personal clarity. Yeah. I don't really have much more on it than that at, at this point. That's okay. <laughs> but the light bulb turned on. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking cuz there's a lot of thoughts running around in my head. Um <laughs> one of them being, you know, your choice of words like the, the amount of shame that you felt. And just the idea, because like shame is that feeling of being less than and 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 inadequate and all those things. And so do you think that right now with that light bulb having gone off, um, like, do you plan to, and I know you said you haven't gotten very far, so this is more of just a conversation point, but that when that comes up, are you going to address it as like, hey, that's actually shame. Like, I don't have to feel that way. Is that what you hope to do or like how do you hope to navigate it, I guess? I mean, in theory, yeah. But to be honest, I have no idea. Yeah. Because one, it hasn't happened yet. So I genuinely don't know. But two, I think that part of the process that I'm on right now with now knowing that I have ADHD and so I'm trying to discover like, okay, so what does that mean? for me right what do I do with that information um how do I understand myself in light of that I think part of that is trying to find the line between where the ADHD stops and where I start like how much of my isms if you will are actually me and how much are because of the ADHD Mm. and so with that I'm also trying to find the balance between again what is me what is something an area where um, I actually do genuinely struggle in and like could really improve on because it's a me thing versus that can be put in the ADHD box because I don't want to just be like, ah, ADHD, haha, like to everything and then just take no responsibility for the things that I do or for the areas where I, I really do need to grow in. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. No, that's I okay. I just wondered. Yeah. That, that same instruction. Pro- yeah. <laughs> That deconstruction process, though, it it must definitely be kind of daunting and and just confusing, and you're sorting through so many things. Um, I would be curious to see what ends up happening when, like, the more you sort out, okay, this is the Priya box, this is the ADHD box, and, like, how you choose to interact with each one. Like, is your approach to both boxes going to be the same? Is it, like, I'm just curious to see. Because I think the cool thing is just that initial like the relief that you expressed when you got that diagnosis Mm -hmm. oh my goodness like there's a reason and like just how excited you were about it made me so happy for you like I felt like this missing puzzle piece that you were like oh thank god yeah yeah but I I wonder just how what yeah what that'll look like when you now have these two boxes and you're starting to sort through them how you plan to approach each box and, and I mean, I hope, cause what I don't want is for you to kind of approach it where it's like almost where you're more gentle on the ADHD box and the Priya box. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Cause I think both deserve ample grace. 
and like just you going through that process of sorting it out like that's not easy and I think it's really really amazing that you're like no I want to I don't want to just say oh ADHD and move along and I mean for some people that might just be how they have to navigate it but you're like you're like no I think I can do it differently and so I'm excited for you in that but I I wouldn't want you to be gentler on one box than the other yeah I think that I'm trying to Because I I agree. I think it's, yeah, it's just me wanting to, again, find the line between having grace for myself in light of that diagnosis and, and, and being gentle with myself in that area. But the line between grace and gentleness and even accommodation sometimes yeah. and making excuses definitely I think getting the diagnosis was great because it did feel relieving and it did feel exciting because it was like it it, it made things it made a lot of things make more sense <laughs> but it also then brought up a whole lot of more questions yeah so I think it's the questions that I'm trying to sort through. Okay. Yeah. I can't wait for the updates that are going because <laughs> this is like, this is going to be a long journey, a lifelong journey, really. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just excited to see how, how your, your other like light bulb moments all come together and what ends up happening. And I love that you were able to have that moment and just recognize like, okay, this is, this is something that, I've been through before. This is how I've handled it. And like, huh. Because now you can decide how do you want to handle it moving forward, what that actually means, how you feel about it, and just recognize that like you don't have to feel bad. Yeah. And like put that that level of shame on yourself. You don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited and happy for you that you did Mm -hmm. have that moment. That's huge. Yeah, Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I've always thought of myself as like a a decently confident person. So to have that realization of there being internalized shame and and guilt and stuff like that it was like wait so am I not (laughs) yeah (laughs) am I not anymore what does this mean (laughs) yeah yeah well and so what what do you think about that though do you think are you still parsing that apart or just like for face value what are your thoughts on somebody being super confident but also like having that that backpack of the bouncy backpack running with my backpack yeah Uh, yeah running with your backpack of like some shame and some guilt like can they coexist I think that they can that's all I have for you so far (laughs) I think they can too (laughs) I I think they can too because what human do you know who has never ever ever experienced something that they felt shame or guilt or inadequacy about Mm -hmm. no one so yeah yeah Yeah. I love it yeah good for you so that's me what about you what's yours um mine is I I received a letter in the mail this week from myself to myself that I had written a year ago I wrote it at a like this women's conference that I had gone to and reading it back was just such a fascinating experience. And like, it, it did make me kind of emotional and just, it took me right back to exactly in that moment, everything that was actually happening. And so it came a little bit beyond a year, but I I had totally forgotten about it. So I wasn't expecting it at all. And to read what I was going through, what my prayers were, um, some of the things that I was really struggling with, and to compare it to me now, I was just, I mean, first of all, I was just so thankful. I was like, Lord, you did a work. Because the, the, the tone in which I had written it, I could just, I just remember exactly how I was feeling. And I really thought I was not going to get out of that feeling and I am out of it. And it was like, 
really, really just such a blessing. And even just to to say I had been I had been feeling kind of lost from God even. And I wrote that where I was like, I was like, I don't, I don't know why I feel this way, but I do feel kind of lost. Like I I don't feel as secure in my relationship with God as I have in the past. Like there's just a lot happening and I'm I'm overwhelmed. And I I mean, I never feel like I will be able to say, oh, like my relationship with God is so good. It's perfect. Like I don't want to ever say that either because I think there's always room to grow and with every different phase, things are going to be different. But it is it is different in a good way compared to how it was then. And it just reminded me like, it's okay to go through the valley. Like it doesn't mean you're going to stay there. It doesn't mean everything's going to fall apart. And I didn't have to feel as bad about the things happening. Like it was valid that I felt as bad about it um, and just how I felt in general. But it's like, she made it out. And it was, it was a really, really just a good feeling to be like, okay, if you made it out of that stuff and you have to write yourself a letter today, the things that you're so heartbroken about and worried about and stressed about, like they're going to pass too. And it was just really encouraging and kind of surreal in a way. Yeah. Okay. I have to ask, logistically speaking, Mm -hmm. how do you receive a letter in the mail? From yourself. From yourself from a year ago. Yeah. How do you do that? I think that they had somebody collect the letters and probably set a Google Cal date to like resend out the letters. And so, because I was thinking, okay, if I did this every year logistically again, how would I make that happen? Mm -hmm. And my thought was to give it to somebody and ask them to mail it to me. But we would, it would work better if we swapped, like you did it and I did it. And then we set it so I know when I'm mailing it out. I think it would be like a we fun should little do that. I would love to do that genuinely. We should actually do that. I think we should. Oh my goodness. What if what if other people did it too? That'd be fun. That'd be so cool. Be really fun. Low key, that's time traveling. <laughs> it kind of is. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah. I, I'm going to wow. think about that more, how we could actually make that happen. Hmm. Because guys, like it is, it's a really, really, really wonderful thing and and I think whether because whether you you read your letter back and you realize that things are worse or harder than they were before you still are able to see how differently you thought about things or or just where you were and I think that that's a really cool thing because some of the things in there I was like wow like just thinking about the circumstances not what was in the letter but the circumstances of the time there were some things that were happening then that aren't now and I miss certain things Mm -hmm. or I like I'm like oh like at that point in time I you know I was doing this at work and now I don't do that anymore and like just different things where I was like oh like it was just a different time and it's cool to reflect back on it and just see what your hopes were for yourself then to now it's it's just really cool Mm -hmm. that is really cool yeah I feel like sometimes we have a tendency to look back on things as either being like remembering them in either a more positive light or in a much more negative light. Yeah. So I think that it would, I imagine, be almost kind of grounding in a way yes. to hear your own words and your own thoughts like from in that exact moment. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, it, it really, really was. It was, yeah, it was special. Yeah. And I didn't, at the time when I did it, I didn't think it was going to hit the way it did. Mm-hmm. I was kind of like, okay, like we're doing this activity. Everyone's doing it. Um, There's a reason they told us to do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you think that sometimes the situations that we go through in the moment are as, at least in part, as hard as they are because we lack the perspective that we have once you're out of the situation and can look back 2020 hindsight I guess right so yeah I feel like doing that is inviting your like future self with all of the perspective that she's gonna have to be able to accurately reflect on 
the in the moment, no perspective version of yourself. Yes, absolutely. And I think perspective gives us grace. Yeah. It gives us so yeah. much grace. Like there are things that you beat yourself up for so hard. You're so harsh. Even just like, even with your BGP moment, you're you're saying like, I don't know how I'm navigating, but at least I understand younger Priya and that like she was confused and didn't get it and was like just as frustrated mm -hmm. as like somebody else around her might have been and just as like worried about it. But now you're out and you're like, okay, like I know more of the puzzle now. And so have grace for that that version of you and like, continue to up level mm -hmm. yeah yeah wow that's that's actually such a cool thing I love that it is mm -hmm. yeah that'd be really encouraging yeah get to see like a very stark compare like a yeah a very stark comparison before and after mm -hmm. in a way of your own personal growth yeah just like laid out right in front of you yes. then and now yeah yeah, it was cool. That's really cool. Thank you. What else have we got? Uh, well, speaking of personal growth. <laughs> oh, speaking of personal growth. Good segue. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Um Yeah, we we were thinking that a little heart to heart would be good. Yes. We love heart to heart. A little low energy heart to heart. <laughs> Can we call it like a cozy girl heart to heart? Let's not let's not like diminish it with being like ugh, low energy. Let's call it something cute. <laughs> okay. Let's romanticize it a little bit. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. Um how are you doing? Actually, it's interesting cuz I think that I've only really become aware of it and have started to come to terms with it if you will in the last couple days okay yeah so like this is fresh <laughs> hot off the press fresh. um and that is that I think that I'm at a point right now where I need to work on allowing my heart to be softened because I think I'm talking so slowly because like this is so fresh that I'm almost You're like processing. processing like in in real like as the words are coming out <laughs> we love that thank you the for wheels are turning in. um yeah I I think that I I didn't realize like how much <sighs> the extent to which I'm I'm just like jaded <laughs> mm. and how that has kind of become a up here thing to a here thing head to heart for those who are listening <laughs> yeah oh true yeah <laughs> If you're listening again, what are you doing? Yeah, if you're listening, you should be watching. <laughs> Fix it. <laughs> um, yeah, a head to heart thing. Um, yeah, I just I I don't think that I that I realized how much it had become a heart thing and not just a head thing. And I think that I'm realizing that I'm at a point right now where if I want to continue to grow any further, that has to happen. And, and again, I'm not totally sure what to do with that because I've never been in this circumstance before. Can I ask you to clarify a question? Yeah. Ask me all the questions, please. It'll help me process. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're saying you've never been in this position before. Explicitly, what would you say this position is? Mm. Um, 
I've never been this level of jaded, needing to feel defensive. Um, feeling um, this level of like skeptical of other people um, and and having even if I don't necessarily like believe those things about somebody having that be the default place that my brain goes. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm making any more sense than I was before. <laughs> well, hmm. no, I don't want to interrupt. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. No, go go for it. It's actually it's actually okay. Okay. Um so I, I'm hearing you're you're you recognize that you're jaded. You recognize that you might be skeptical. Mm-hmm. Um and you recognize that is it that you you can't keep leading with your head and you have to lead with your heart? Or is it the other way hmm. around? That's an interesting question. I don't know. What are you skeptical about is another question that I would like to ask. And I understand, like, if you have to veto my question, that's fine. No, it's okay. So, okay. So I think for me, I think for me, um, a lot of it does come from church hurt. Okay. And so I think the skepticism when it comes to people is, in terms of like people within the church being skeptical of their intentions, motives, uh, authenticity is a big one. And so I think that my default in that sense mindset has turned into almost like guilty until proven innocent in a way. Okay. Like you are inauthentic and I sh- probably shouldn't trust you until you prove to me that you're not that way. And not that like the alternative were, would be for me to just like be blindly trusting everybody. Um, but I don't want to automatically have my brain go to a place of. Mm, not sure about you (laughs) as opposed to I don't know nothing about you I'm sure that you're probably great until I have a reason to think that you're not um yeah I I this is so hard it's okay Yeah, this is so hard to process in 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 real time. Yeah. Um Yeah. Can I ask another question then? Yes, all the questions. Cuz you you said you realized how jaded you were. In what way were you jaded? What was your thought process or your stance that you're now like, "Huh, that was wrong or that was you know, a pigeonholed view." Like wh- go and in, go into there. I'm curious about that. So Okay, I'll stick with the with the context of like the church, for example. Okay. I think for me growing up in the church, there was just a level of like it was the norm environmentally for me. Like it's just what I knew because there was no alternative for me to have known. And so the church environment and the way that you learn to function in that church environment the way you you feel like you're supposed to function in that church environment the things that you say that you don't say that you wear that you don't wear the how you talk to people um your approaches to different people um the internalized understanding and acceptance of 
like the hierarchies in church, um, the ways that I saw people like approaching the pastors, for example, as being on, you know, somewhat of a, a, a pedestal, if you will. And Yeah, again, I I just I didn't know to question certain things because I I was never told that there were things that you should question. And so it just all felt normal and fine and good to me until something happened where it was just kind of like the the glass kind of shattered, I guess. Mm. And then all of a sudden realize that like, oh, this is not so perfect and this is actually not so like pretty and and clean cut. And like people here are actually really imperfect. And, you know, the pastors and the leaders that I've always been taught to respect and look up to and um, listen to, defer to. uh can actually be maybe a little bit twisted and not necessarily have everybody's best interest at heart and are maybe actually just kind of looking up for themselves. And so to just have that very stark contrast happen like all at once, um, yeah, it was very jarring and so then once that did happen it was like oh okay well now I'm realizing that there's actually a whole list of things that I now have to think about because I now know that those are things that I could think about (laughs) and question and Am I making any sense? Keep going. Okay. Because I actually don't know. <laughs> and this is just a string of words coming out of my mouth that like. I'll ask questions. Okay. Keep going. Um, yeah. I, I, I think that basically the situation just kind of rocked my world a little bit and just left me in a place of like, okay, well, if this is not the 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 place and the environment that I just always knew that it was, then what is it? And if it's not what I always thought that it was, then how do I approach it? How do I be here knowing that? Um and, and okay, okay, and then and then sort of bring it back to the original question. I think that like along that process of like questioning and, you know, I think that my heart has just kind of gotten a little bit hard. I (laughs) I do have questions. Okay. (laughs) One, I'm very curious about what your heart getting hard has actually looked like and, and how it affects you or like what what do you perceive it being as because if you're saying you you recognize there needs to be some sort of change how how has that looked and what are you hoping to get it to and second what do you think scares you the most about this deconstruction process of like shifting the way in which you always believed or understood things to be okay what was the first one again um you, you you said you're like you feel like your heart has gotten hard, so I want to know what that looks like. How has that shown up? Mm. Um. Well, I think there's that skepticism towards people that I mentioned before. Mm. I think that it's also looked a little bit like just distancing myself. Um. From what? Well, for a long time, it was from church. Okay. Like, like there was a period of like three, 
four years ish um where I just didn't go anywhere and have anything to do with anything um and I think that it was almost a little bit of like distancing myself from everything including God like if this is if this is the area that hurt me then I'm just gonna not <laughs> like I just don't want to have anything to do with that okay. right now um and it and it's not like it was a I'm now questioning if God exists or not. That's not what it, that's not what it was. Um, but it just became like that friend that I haven't called or texted in a few years. And so you just kind of grow apart, you know? And so now then when you do want to go and reconnect with that friend as close as you once were, um, there's a little bit of like refamiliarizing yourself almost that you have to do. And you almost have to get through like that phase again in a way. And that's kind of where I, I feel like I am right now in terms of my relationship with God. Um, but I think that like the like the the hardness, I guess, that I feel is towards all the other stuff. Like all the other churchy kind of stuff and, you know, people and yeah. Yeah. I I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep shooting questions at you. Okay. <laughs> just like I, I genuinely am just <laughs> Because I think I think what you're describing, I feel like a lot of people have probably gone through this or are currently in the midst of it. Um, and I think it's really important for us to address that sometimes our hearts do get hardened to certain situations and that as good as God is, um, sometimes we as his body don't live up to that. Or actually, all the time we don't live up to that. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's, clearly as you've noticed or, or what I'm kind of learning is like it's not worth it to just cut it off completely and so you are seeking back that relationship and and how to refamiliarize and so I want to know what like what do you want that refamiliarizing process to look like like what or like what do you think is lacking currently if that's even the word in your relationship with God or like where do you want to see that change in your one-on-one -on -one relationship with him I think before there was a just a, a a closeness that was there that I miss I mean I know that that was because we were still calling and texting, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, so, I mean, I know that, like, that's the reason. Um, can you say the question again? Yeah, I just want to know what's, what do you feel like is lacking or missing that you need to refamiliarize yourself with God? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I think what I said before, mm -hmm. and I think that when it comes to getting back to that, but specifically while also being involved in a church setting, it's knowing, figuring out how to be there and be present and involved now that that bubble has been bursted of like this is like great and mm -hmm. fun and normal and everyone's like happy and healthy and la 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 um 
to yeah now being it like it's burst and now knowing that like it's I mean it can be like that but it's absolutely not all like that so I guess maybe the answer to your question is I'm not totally sure I feel like I feel like it's um <laughs> like returning to the scene of the crime <laughs> yeah. and I just don't I'm not totally sure yeah how to to be there now knowing yeah. what I know and having been through what I've been through and yeah, yeah. well I think the interesting I, li- I like that idea of returning to the scene of, scene of the crime because It just reminds me of, like, there's things that we will never know or understand trying to figure it out on the perimeter. Like, you actually have to put yourself in that situation again. Knowing that in the past it has been painful, knowing that in the past it didn't go so well, and it it very much so gives me, we walk by faith and not by sight. Because you have to re-put yourself in that situation and be like, hey, God, like, if you want us to figure this out, you want us to refamiliarize, you want me to figure out what I understand and believe to be true about the church, what that means for me, how am I supposed to be different in this situation? Um, you got to be there. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not an easy thing to do because you're still carrying around scars from what happened before. Mm-hmm. And and some of them might not even be full healed scars. Like they could be still be tender spots. Yeah. But wanting to put yourself back in that situation and say, okay, God, like where where do you actually want me to go from here? What do you want me to do with this? Um, it's huge and it and it's brave and it's scary and all those things. Mm-hmm. You know what I just thought of? It it almost feels like you know when someone gets into like a really really terrible car accident, and you know they're they're legs are all messed up let's say and there's a sometimes a a long period of time that they go through where they're essentially bedridden you know their legs are in casts or whatever it happens to be and they can't walk and so they're just bedridden and their body on the inside is healing and it doesn't maybe look like a whole lot is going on on the outside because they're just kind of laying in one place And I feel like the last several years have kind of been like that for me. But now it's almost a little bit more of like the rehabilitation process of things. We're like, okay, the casts are off. I don't have to lay in bed anymore. But now I have to go through the work of like learning how to walk again after the injury. That's kind of what it feels like now is now it's rehab now I have to relearn how to walk that's that's what it almost feels like um and I think that maybe like the the hardness of heart that I feel is just a little bit of like what I imagine you know like muscle atrophy would kind of be like you know where like the the muscle is totally gone and the you know your joints haven't had to be, like Move bend way. a certain way and you know hold up your weight and and all that kind of stuff like that i think is kind of what i'm feeling right now if i could use something else to describe it yeah yeah that's a really good analogy actually yeah thanks you're welcome just thought of that one right now oh, she's on fire. the spot she's <laughs> fire <laughs> i <laughs> I want to know, um, what does texting and calling in our little analogy, um, God and refamiliarizing practically, what do you think that entails or what do you hope to, and I I know like sometimes I'm asking you questions and you're like, I don't know yet, but I mean like what things do you think are essential to build that one-on-one personal relationship with God? Like what's in your starter pack? (laughs) <laughs> um 
Well, again, I, I think that when you're developing a friendship with somebody, it's you only develop it through time spent. And for me, that's a big thing right now. For so long, there was no time spent. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so um, trying to do that again is difficult. Um, but I think that would be the first thing that I would put in that starter pack. Yeah. Would just be taking the time to spend with God. Um, which, yeah, is something that that I find kind of hard. Yeah. Do you find it hard because you can't find the time or because it's painful in some way? Or have you just not found, like, almost your niche of how that personal time is structured? I think definitely that. Um, Like the last thing I said? Yeah. Okay. I think it can also sometimes be hard, honestly, because I get distracted really easily. Like, that's just genuinely a a difficult thing for me. And I mean, it's not even specific to that. Like, I get distracted easily in general. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I think also knowing, like, again, when it comes to the friend that you haven't seen and talked to in a really long time, you almost have to make this decision, like, okay, it's been a long time. And when we hang out the first couple times, it's going to feel a little bit, almost a little bit awkward in a way. Like, again, refamiliarizing ourselves with each other. And you kind of have to make that decision like, okay, do I want to get through that, that short, awkward, difficult phase because I know that this friendship is actually worth it in the long run? Or do I want to do the comfortable thing right now and just, Mm. it's been a long time so let's just let it fade off fade off and and go um and I don't want that so now it's <laughs> the refamiliarizing <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah I I'm not really sure if this question is going to make much sense but it's I'm like, not sure if anything I've said has made much sense. So honestly, ask away. I mean, I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, why don't you want that to fade away? Like, actually, for you, why, why is it not okay or not enough to, because like, it sounds like now it's like, yeah, I know of God. I've known of God. And now I want to get like back to knowing God. Mm-hmm. And so. Like, why is that so important for you? I Like, I understand, but I want to just hear from you, like, mm-hmm. for yourself. Why? That's so interesting. Ooh, that could be hard to articulate in this exact moment of time. Let's That's see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what we come up with. You don't have to. Um, I think because I've known and I have seen and I have felt and I have experienced how deeply um, meaningful that relationship can be and how uh fruitful it can be how helpful and beautiful it can be how safe it can feel how um transformative it it can be um and that's not something that I want to give up I just know that, yeah, again, it, it, it takes some work to get back there. Um, but yeah, the alternative of just like letting it go and giving it up is just so not worth it to me. I feel like this is like a choose your heart yeah. kind of thing in a way. Um, and I mean, in the long run, not having that is not a hard <laughs> that I want I just don't so yeah that it I mean I know that life is better having that relationship with the Lord um yeah I know because I've known yeah yeah I'm really I'm really 
excited for you. I'm proud of you. I mean, I'm always excited and proud for you. Let's be real. But <laughs> I feel like we're just perpetually like, yes. Yeah, but like, <laughs> to as each we other. should. As we should. Um, but I, I am like really excited for you because I know that you were burned very badly. Yeah. And I know that that is not something to, it's, it's not like, <sighs> It's hard and it's it's harder the further you get from it and the longer you sat in the like, I'm just going to stay away. And you saying, no, I'm, I want to try and open up myself in these new ways and and really cultivate this relationship with more intention than I have before with the Lord. Like that's. It just it, it speaks so much to just like how much you've grown and matured and how you're able to process what happened in a maybe a different way and not not even to be like oh it wasn't that bad like because it was but but to be able to say I'm not letting that circumstance that was brought about by humans Mm -hmm. stop me from the relationship that I can have with the creator of the world like and I, I I don't even know how to phrase it except just like it's I'm just so glad that you're not like no, humans are trash. Like mm-hmm. I'm not doing it. Yeah. And you're you're not willing to put yourself back in that situation knowing what could happen, but you're like it's worth it because God is worth it. Yeah. Like having that knowing and understanding even if you don't have it figured out. Mm-hmm. Cuz it's true. Mm-hmm. And and to not hold yourself back from that anymore. It it's it's a really 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 beautiful thing. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult. I honestly, if I could write a letter to myself, <laughs> it would be. About it that. would probably be about this. I think you should. <laughs> like, I genuinely think you should write that letter. Literally, give it to me, and I'll set a timer or date, whatever, and I will mail it back to you. Okay. <laughs> because it's, it will be really cool to see what happens. Like, what what is God going to do in this year for you with that? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, and and honestly. I know that it's going to be good because I know that God is good. Yeah. And so I'm excited to see it. Um, it's the part where I have to be an active participant <laughs> in that happening. Yeah. That's the, the phase that I'm at right now. Is there anything um, like I as your friend could do to support you in that? Or like anybody? Or if you knew somebody else was in this similar situation, like that you think would be helpful and supportive. Mm. Um, oh, that's a good question. I mean, pray for me. Your girl needs it, but uh, always, <laughs> always. Um, I think maybe asking me about it and like checking in, because I think that because the process is hard, um it's sometimes easier to just like put it on the back burner um and maybe without a little bit of like checking in i i might just leave it there <laughs> okay no that's not true i won't but i may leave it there for longer than then might be on a would slow really boil be helpful. A, a quick boil. Yeah. Yeah. S- a low simmer. <laughs> Eat yeah. a rolling boil. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. That can be done. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for unpacking that, even though you didn't really know how to unpack that. Like I, actually. I honestly am actually so curious to listen back to this because I have no idea if anything that I said made any sense. <laughs> like me, me verbal processing out loud in the moment can sometimes be very <laughs> like yeah abstract random words just yeah yeah so that's okay i mean okay cuz obviously you're like i don't even know what i said but do you do you feel any type of way right now like you know sometimes you could be like i don't really know what that was but like it feels good that it got off my chest or like uh like i I feel like that has to like come all the way back and start over. Like, no, I don't feel like that. Okay. No, actually, you know, part of the reason why I don't feel like that is actually because of something that you said the other day, which is that I am, um, how did you put it? I said that 
you can be a black and white thinker, but the way in which you like yeah. express it is very abstract. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah, I, I feel that. I think for me, a lot of the time things make sense in my brain because I've just sat with them rolling around for so long. I mean, not in this instance, but with other things. <laughs> Typically. <laughs> um, but then for some reason, when I try to actually get it out and like verbalize it in a conversation, for some reason, all of the order of thoughts that I thought I had, I don't know what happens to it. And it, oh, and yeah, it just comes out as if I hadn't spent so much time processing and making sense of things. Why do I keep hitting this microphone? Put your hands down. <laughs> I can't. I have to talk with my hands. I know. Just talk lower with them. It's hard when you're a hand talker. And I am a hand talker. Yeah, me too. I think maybe like talking with times. my hands. Huh? You hit the mic like 10 times. Today. I know. I know. Maybe talking with my hands is part of how I process. Process. Yeah. Because if it I don't have a too. word to use, maybe my hands can say the <laughs> like, Do the gesture thing. The gesture. The, yeah. This thing, you know. To me, my hands are like <laughs> the bold, the italicies, the underline, like to my verbal typing mm. mm-hmm. yeah thank you for sharing the all that facts <laughs> yes exactly yeah yeah okay in the meantime yeah ej you're up what up time it's to shine boy briefs do you know what i feel like we need a boy briefs jingle <laughs> like a little like oh like, true you know I mean? Almost so like down. i th- i would love that that like, would actually be like kind of funny. funny yeah i so i think we should oh, we work, should on, work that. on that would it be yeah. vain if i made my own jingle you're literally a producer. Go for it. Have yeah, at it. Do, that. Like, do it. It's going to be some R&B fire. Do it. It's harmonies nonstop. Do it. Like, actually, <laughs> go for if, it. If your own voice is on the track, even better. Do it. It's Boy Reefs. It's you. Let's go. Well, I it think wouldn't we be should. anybody else. Exactly. It's him or nothing. Yeah. Unless one day we start having guest Boy Reefs, which I would be down for. True. Somebody to help EJ not feel like he's alone in the testosterone. Yeah. I mean, that'd be nice. I don't need that, though. I stand on my two. We know. But sometimes it's fun to hear because, like. I could be wrong, though. You've said you don't speak for all men. So sometimes it's fun to hear from other men. Yeah. But you're doing a great job. We appreciate you. And I can't wait to hear the jingle. Thank you're you. doing great, sweetie. Thanks. Okay. You got a question for him? I have a question. <gasps> Yay. Yeah. Okay. This is my question. How do guys choose their this is her picture. Ooh. I don't know what that is. Okay. The this is her picture is the picture that you show people, like your go-to picture that you show people when you talk about the person that you're with, like your wife or your girlfriend or whatever. They don't know who she is. So you're like, oh, yeah, like her name is picture. blah, blah, blah. Like, let me show you a picture. And then you pull up this picture and like that's uh, your go-to one the this is her picture i like this question this is fun okay this one might be hard for me because i think you're just universally beautiful Aww. like objectively i think yeah she is i think objectively anybody that would see you would say damn you know so I just give them your Instagram. My heart. I just give them your Instagram. Love like you. personally. <laughs> the golden retriever just popped out. She's dying for this to be over. So you can go like rest your head and get the hair pads and be like, I love you so much. So That's true. <laughs> in my personal experience, I guess if I had to pick a picture, it's one of our wedding pictures because I think they were edited well by the photographer. Mm. And because I'm not Shout a out to Becca. because I don't have the eye for that kind of stuff. I just find the one I like the best. And then I just show it. But how do you know it's the one you like the best? Which sorry, I have to rant about your wedding pictures for a second. You guys have some of the best wedding photos I have personally seen. Really? I, I, I kid you not. First of all, you were born to be a bride. <laughs> Like, you give bridal so beautifully. You guys all looked fire. Like, the city pictures. I was just so pleased to be there. You looked like, fire. Everyone really did look fire. Like, everyone. 
It's actually true. It, yeah. But you guys this have good some of my favorite wedding photos out of like people that I know. Really? I really loved your wedding photos. Anyway. Wow. I agree. Over. I mean, honestly, shout out to Becca. Becca. For real. Becca kills it. If I ever get She's married, incredible. I'm hiring Becca. She's incredible. She's phenomenal. Oh, and she she knows how to get every complexion, every skin tone. Yeah. 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 That's so true. There are some the photographers. Yeah. There are some photographers where their editing looks so good, but then you see them photographing a person with darker skin and all of a sudden, Trash. like people will be looking kind of ashy yeah. or like kind of green. Yeah. Yeah, Becca hit him all. Mm-hmm. No, the warmth. Oh, it was glow. Everyone there. was glowing. It was amazing. Yeah. It's rich. Yes. Yeah. The pictures have depth and yes. like richness to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's one of those photographers too that knows how to make you feel comfortable. Yeah. Because most people aren't comfortable in front of a camera. And like part of, I think, being a good photographer is knowing how to like pose people and make them feel comfortable and like, Definitely. you know, put them at ease and. Yeah, she's so good at that. Yeah, Becca's great. Yeah, I'm gonna link her in the bottom. We love you. you. Actually should. Yeah, we love Becca, and and again, you guys looked fab in your photos. But how do you choose <laughs> which one? Like, how did you know it was your favorite of Bria? Yeah, like what's the thought process behind yeah. choosing that this is her picture? That like what what are the what what goes what are you on? looking for? This answer might annoy you. Mom and okay. dad are gonna fight. <laughs> I didn't have a thought process. <laughs> okay. That's it. I saw the picture and I was like, I like it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> now. Yeah, I'm annoyed. I'm like, how do you know you like it more than other ones though? Like yeah. in my mind, that doesn't make sense. I want to hear your thought process though after, because I want to compare you two. Go ahead. I don't know because realistically what happened was I had a picture that I would that was my go to, and I would show people, and every any time I show people, I feel gassed up because the guys would always be like, they 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 either give me two reactions, one was like a nice bro kind of thing, and the other was like a nonchalant kind of like nice yeah, <laughs> right. But I could see I could I could see that they was looking. Right. <laughs> so <interesting. laughs> See, that is a whole a whole boy briefs question itself. Like, why do Literally. guys act like they're nonchalant when well, they're not? When they're so chalant. Yeah. They're all the chalant. All the chalant. Majorly chalant. I'm <laughs> crying. Okay, I'm so sorry, EJ. Keep and, going. And I'm the kind of like some guys don't like when other guys look at their girl. Okay. I'm not that guy. I feel like it's a flex. <laughs> So when I see the guys react that way, I feel like king of the castle. Hmm. And anytime I show women the pictures, they'd always be like, oh, my gosh, she's gorgeous. Or like. Is that how women sound to you? Is that age, how women sound to you? No, they have higher voices. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm you want, derailing. You want me to do my women voice? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Not him getting into character. He's adjusted. He adjusted oh his gosh. whole posture. Actually, I'll, I'll I'll give you the voice of a coworker specifically. Oh, so it's oh gonna my. be annoying. Well, I shouldn't say that. Actually, she cussed, so I'm not gonna cuss. Please don't. No. Coworkers' voices are usually. <laughs> when she, you went, them. she went. She <laughs> went. <Hold on. laughs> she goes. She goes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> How'd you get her? And I was like, wait a second. <laughs> You're rude. <laughs> I refuse to believe that women sound like that. No, wait, I know some of them. Sorry. Do. I don't oh, know. No. <laughs> That's the best I could do. I'm not a I'm not an impressionist. <laughs> That's so funny. Now, I have a side thought to this question. Okay. If my girl was not universally good looking then there might be a thought process. Mm. I would try to find the most flattering picture that wouldn't give another guy an excuse to not feel jealous. Hmm. But in general, though, even subconsciously thinking that you don't actually have a thought process, would we not all just pick 
the picture that we think is the most flattering or like best portrays the person that we're with. I think I wouldn't necessarily pick, okay, this is the picture they look the best in. Cause I, and I know I would be able to figure that out, but I would pick the picture that I just like the most. Mm -hmm. So whether it be like, oh, like they just looked really sweet or like, um, they're doing this thing that they love. And so they look a specific way. Like it might not be their most flattering, but obviously I guess I would be attracted to like them in their element Mm -hmm. doing. So I would pick a picture kind of more like that. Like, yeah, like a picture where like a candid probably or something where it's just like them. Yeah. Like a picture where you think that they look the most attractive, whether that's you think that they look the most attractive in that picture physically like looks wise or again they're doing something that they love and so that's really attractive about them or yeah I guess whatever but a picture that you think yeah but attractive right right. but I wouldn't really think about like the universally or like uh, well not even universally but like do does this look flattering well other people think that this is flattering yeah I don't like I don't necessarily hate think that, picture, that I would and I would still use it because I'm because like, I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Well, I think if I if I was the kind of person who took pictures and just had pictures on my phone, then I might even I might have a process then. But because I'm not and I just send them to your Instagram, I know that you vetted all your Instagram pictures. <laughs> We love the consideration. It's a safe bet. (laughs) It is. It's a safe space. (laughs) It is. There's nothing on your Instagram that you're going to be like, ugh, don't show them that. Because then why'd you post it? You wouldn't have posted it if you didn't like it. I mean, there might be a couple. I'm not even going to lie. But anyways. I'm way back. (laughs) Probably. Mm. Yeah. No way. I'll take it. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting. I don't know. Some guys might think differently about it. That one, I, I can't confidently say most guys would xyz okay well if another guy is listening to this what would your thought process be yeah and do you think that there's a part of you that's also considering how other guys are going to react yeah like is that a factor that that crashes your mind when you go through that process of choosing your this is her picture i can confidently say yes to that what I don't think there's any guy that's going to show his girl to another guy and not feel like it's a competition. It feels like a competition? Kind of. Hmm. Oh. With men, there's always competition. Like, there's always a sense of, I want to be the best. Right? And that may not be the forefront of our thoughts. You know, there's healthy competition and then there's not healthy. But I do think that little sense of like, this is the woman that I chose. If another man doesn't think that she's attractive, then that makes me not top dog. Hmm. But if all the guys think that my girl is attractive and I got her, that means I was. Okay, wait, I have a follow-up question. What would be a, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Okay, what would, wait, let me try again. (laughs) Okay, you said that there isn't necessarily a thought process that you use for choosing your, this is her picture. But what is something that would make you automatically not choose a certain picture? Does that make sense? I thought so. It did make sense. Okay. Like, what, what about a picture would immediately rule that out uh, from the I've, running? The first thought would be... To be America's be, Next Top Model. <laughs> the first thought Korea, would be... you were still in the running. You're still in the running. But that show is traumatizing. I'm anyway. hinged. Anyway, sorry. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> the first thought would probably be, like, can I see your face? Oh, okay. Well. You're asking my thought process. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like if you're trying to pick a this is her picture, 
and it doesn't have her face in it. And that's the picture like that you choose. Body. Yeah, but it might have then your body. Then you're probably, I don't know, that would feel really vain it's to like me. It's a red flag to me. Yeah. A little bit. That would, that would give me the ick. Yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. Okay, but this is a part of your process, so I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I do get it. And but then, that feels obvious. Face aside, though. And then I guess the next thought would be maybe how recent? Maybe. This is logical. Mm -hmm. You know, because cause if you give a, a picture of her, like, from, like, five years ago, and there's recent ones, then it's going to be like, well, why? You know? Mm -hmm. And then I would think, would she approve of me showing this picture? That's a good one. And then love from there... Thoughtful consideration. <laughs> yes. Is this a flex <laughs> on the other guys? <laughs> mm. Okay, but back to my question though. Aside from her face not being in it, what would immediately rule out a picture as like? I just gave you everything. No, what? You wasn't listening. <laughs> Ick. <laughs> <laughs> That whole list I just gave is all the things I would consider. You know why I ask that, though, is because I feel like there are guys who would answer that being like, oh, like if her like top was too low cut and like her, you know, boobs were out or whatever. Then uh, I no, wouldn't I use that, that picture because nobody sees that except for me. <laughs> Priya the Neanderthal has entered the chat. <laughs> Shayna, who's who, who's. <laughs> Opposite sex voice is worse. My coworker girl voice or her Neanderthal oh, voice? Oh no. Oh, I'm sorry, did you always... just call men Neanderthals? Some of them are. I always That's fair. in the middle. That's fair. Um I don't know. <laughs> Shane is never gonna really come bad. back. <laughs> no, I get more and more scared every week. Um <laughs> I, and you know, the funny thing is you guys ask me these questions, even when we're not plotting. And I'm always like, because oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> usually you don't pick my size. So I'm going to keep asking until I win one. Oh really? my gosh. But I've taken your side on other things before. That's true. I yeah, feel like I'm yeah, but actually not in the petty question. Like me and my bladder. Yeah. I want to I win the petty question. I feel like the deep stuff. A lot of the time I'm like, I'm with you. We're, we're like riding it out. Um, But I guess. Here's the thing. Here's my gripe with EJ's girl voice. Oh, no. So I would. Yeah. Is that like you can't just do the voice. You like you put your hand like this. You roll your eyes up and you do this. While <laughs> you're doing it. And I don't like that. But that should give me points. Priya like just said the voice like, yes, I mean, she had to bear down. You saw her chin tuck. But like, yeah. And yes, it was like. That's not fair, though, boy, because, because like, she did it, too, though. But There's no it, camera no, on me, but, but she did the. Hoo, hoo, hoo. She didn't do that. She did this. I will run the camera back. Run it back. I got to stop recording first. Oh, okay. well, we won't do that. The, I'll put it. Real, I'll, I'll edit it into video the episode. Of its own, like run the clip back. Literally. We will see who wins. <laughs> yeah, because one day I need to get a clip of him doing a girl voice because he always do. You know, he always does this. Yeah. Because like, it's not just the voice; he does the action. Yeah, and I'm I, like, I feel like I feel like girls talk with an attitude. Do we really? Constantly. Constantly. I, I think so. What? Yeah. An attitude of the spirit of the Lord. Anyway. I don't think we talk with an attitude. And that doesn't mean like bad. This is the guy who we're always calling out for tone. It doesn't mean bad attitude. You know what? That's true. It doesn't mean and bad. And I think that that's the winning point right there. Oh my God. <laughs> It's giving gender wars, guys. Like, it really I'm just really is. not here for it right now. <laughs> this is never going to end. We're going to be on like episode 150, and this is still going to be like a gripe. No. Me and Priya are going to be 150 and still be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Oh, mm, so goodness. I guess, unfortunately, EJ, I will say, ding, 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 you lost this round because the actions had me feeling some type of upset. And I feel like because you felt so much from my actions is why I should win. 
I performed better. I drew more out of you. <laughs> would you rather, would you rather go to a would you rather go to a show? <laughs> would you rather go to a show, watch a show, listen to something that didn't compel you to feel something? Yeah, but it could like you could have just compelled me to be like, ick. I kind of did though. Well, yeah, but that doesn't make it good. It doesn't have to be good. That's show business. Y'all, what show business is are you involved? <laughs> okay, in? what the hangry is coming out in everybody. Oh, I think we gotta go. Wait, so did you get your final question answered? Yeah. No, you didn't, because you did your your boy voice about like no one sees that except for me. See, you just did the head. Yeah, you just did it. I did. Oh my god, because I wasn't like I was imitating her at this point, not men. <laughs> I can see. Whatever. I can see. Ha ha! Victory is ours. I can see. <laughs> anyway, did you get the answer to that question? Yeah. I mean, I would like to hear an answer from the general a different male population. Male, yeah. Boys, don't leave us hanging. Um, please let us <laughs> please. know. Please, we beg. Yeah, let us know what you think. How would you pick your girls? This is her picture. What are your... um? your yeses and your nose like what, what do we have to keep an eye out for and what's a go yeah i want to know inquiring yeah. minds want to know yes ma'am okay snack time snack time okay so if you guys enjoyed today's episode of big girl panties be sure to follow us on socials um everything is in the description to follow big girl panties priya myself ej all of that if you enjoyed the episode as well please be sure to give us a rating and review on spotify on apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening or if you watched us on youtube and if you didn't you totally should um like our video subscribe leave us a comment words of affirmation we love it and otherwise stay true stay faithful keep embracing the journey don't get your panties in a bunch and we will see you next time Bye. Bye.